is the Holy Ghost for today? You know? And I begin to think about how that it saddens me, Pastor Statham, that I have been into so many Church of Gods in the last four or five years. How that it seems like they are of the opinion the Holy Ghost is not for today. Uh, I, and, 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 and I was thinking very vividly, I, I was in a church recently within the past, oh, four years, I guess. And uh, had, we'd been going there a few weeks and and we had realized that, okay, that, that wasn't the place for us. But we had continued going. And, and all of a sudden this morning, all you, you talk about, everything was set. I mean, you could walk into the place and you just knew something was going to take place that day. And the choir began to sing. And they sang a couple of songs. And each song, it's like... The, the, the power and the electricity and the anointing just would begin to build. And, and all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost fell in that place. And I'm telling you, it, it, it was marvelous. It was wonderful. In the, in the choir, they kept singing the song. And, and, and people were shouting and they were praising and magnifying God. And they came to the end of the song. And evidently, it was the last song they were prepared to sing because they, they quit. And they went and sat down and... You know, and I'm looking around, and the, the preacher gets up and does his thing, and he preaches a message, and we get in the car, and everybody leaves and goes home. Sister Tracy looked at me, and she said, What happened? And it's like the power of the Holy Ghost just gave me a word, and I said, They did not know what to do. So many churches today have absolutely no idea what Pentecost is about. And it's time that you and I, the folks that, that, that have experienced Pentecost, who knows the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, who, who knows what it is to, to be, be all of a sudden be doing one thing and the next thing you know you're in another world and you're, and you're speaking in another tongue, you're speaking in another language and, 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 and you're just in tune with God and, and you're not ashamed of it, you're not afraid of it, you're, 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 you're not to the point to say, okay now, what do I do that you can say, okay God, I'm yours, you me. I want my daughter to grow up knowing what the Holy Ghost is. I, I can remember I was just a little boy. We went to the Alcoa Church of God over there when it was over in the old building and, and, and I can remember I, I don't know how old I was but I, I was old enough I can remember and, and, and I was laying on the church pew and, and I woke up and I missed mom and daddy and, and I, began to, I began to cry. Where are they at? And I could hear the noise and commotion going on and, and, and one of the old brothers of the church, and it was Brother Lee Hicks again, this, this man, he, 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 he came over and he, said, and he was trying to comfort me. He told me to, to not cry. And, 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 I, and I said, well, where's daddy? Where's daddy? He said, dad, dad, don't worry about your daddy. He said, he's down in the altar and he's seeking the Holy Ghost. And I can remember fear gripping me. I didn't want no ghost getting a hold of my daddy. I didn't want no ghost on him because, you know, that, that's kind of, you know, at that age, that's what I was thinking. But as I began to learn and as I began to be taught in, 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 in Sunday school and in, in children's church and in, in Wednesday night class and in Bible school and begin to understand that's what I want my daddy to have. I know, thank God my dad is full of the Holy Ghost and fire. Thank God it came upon me and, and I want my little girl to grow up knowing what the Holy Ghost is and I want your children and grandchildren to know who the Holy Ghost is, not to be something to be afraid of, not to be something to be ashamed of, but to be able to say, yes, I have got an, an encounter. I have got a knowledge. I have got an understanding of who the Holy Ghost is. Yes. He is a person. He's the third person of the triune Godhead. He is that that gives you comfort. He is that that gives you power. He is that that gives you the ability to live every day of your life. Amen. Well, I know it's Wednesday, but that's all right. If you have your Bible, turn with me to the book of Acts, chapter 1. I was thinking, one of my church members came to me one day and says, I understand why God called the book of Acts the book of Acts. I said, why? He says, it's to teach us how to act. Acts chapter 1. Oh, it's a very familiar verse of Scripture. You all can probably quote it. 
If you get there, Acts chapter 1, verse number 8, if you will stand with me, I want to read this little portion of, of Scripture that Jesus spoke to the disciples that day on the hillside of the Mount of Olives just before his ascension. My, what beautiful words as Jesus said, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Would you lift your hands this way and let us pray together. Father, God, we thank you so much tonight for the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you for each person that is assembled in this place tonight, and I ask God that you would allow us to sit together in heavenly places. Lord, as we come unto you and break the bread of life, that God, we might receive more of that Holy Ghost power, that we might receive more of that Holy Ghost fire, that we might receive more of that power, oh God, to be witnesses all over this world, all in our community and to our families. And Father, I pray that tonight you would give me the words that you would have to say. Let that that you have put in my spirit and in my heart come out, oh God, with words of understanding and knowledge, God, that, that we might take it and go and see other souls saved and one to the kingdom. And Lord, we'll be so careful and thankful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor. For it's in Jesus' name, amen and amen. As I begin to think about my growing up, I can remember going to church and I can remember sitting on the pew and I can remember the choir beginning to sing and I can remember the saints of God dancing down out of the choir and dancing around the front of the church and I can remember men jumping up out of the seat of the pew and running around the building and I can remember myself running around the building time after time and, 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 and I begin to wonder nowadays what's happened to us? Have we gotten so sophisticated that, that we can't allow the power of the Holy Spirit? Have we gotten so embarrassed or, or, or what, what is our, our deal? We have got to understand that the power of the Holy Ghost comes in. And from time to time, it, it's like Pastor preached the other day, it, uh, suddenly takes place. Yes. We can be sitting here right now just like, Normal, and all of a sudden the Holy Ghost can fall. I can remember in, in, in my church in Columbia, it, 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 it was, I, I, well, the word I want to use, it, it was odd, but you know, in God, you know, sometimes it's odd and sometimes it's not. But, but we had a balcony like this, and it seemed like that the Holy Ghost would, would move. It, would, it was like it would fall out of the balcony like a waterfall and would come down that aisle and, and fill the altar. And I tell you, Pastor Stanley, mean, you could literally, you could literally feel like you were stepping into a river. You, you could feel that anointing. Now, now I know we, we preachers all the time tell folks you don't go by feeling, but we Pentecostals, we, we depend a lot of times on feeling because you can feel him. Because he touches you. He is real. And, and, and when you get into that river, when you get into that flow, I, I know it's not going to always be that way. Sometimes I, I can remember, uh, it seemed like I had, a, I had a choir leader one time. It seemed like he always thought if the song moved on the Holy Spirit this Sunday, next Sunday he'd sing the same song. I wonder why people didn't shout and jump like they did the last time. God don't always do it the same way every time. Sometimes he's going to change it up. Sometimes he wants somebody else to step out. Sometimes he wants you to be the one to, 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 to step up to the plate and say, Lord, I'll knock it out of the park this time. God, use me. Here I am, Lord, use me. Like, kind of like Isaiah when he was standing there and he says, I saw the Lord on the throne high and lifted up and his glory filled the temple. His train filled the temple. His power filled the temple. And he said, who will go for us? And he said, here I am, Lord, send me. We need to be more of those Isaiahs that say, here I am, Lord, use me. Here I am, God, send me. But like, you know, Moses, he said, God, what can I do? How can I go? What do I, what, what can I use? God says, what do you have in your hand? I got a stick. If all you got's a stick, use it. If all you got's a mantle, use it. If all you got's a voice, use it. Whatever God gives you, use it. And if you don't know what God's got to give you, say, God, what have you got for me? Use it. 
You see, I, I learned a long time ago, somebody told me this, and, and I found out to be true. God doesn't call the equipped. He equips the called. And it don't matter what anybody else tells you, if God has called you, you can do it. They may say, well, you know, you, you haven't learned yet. Well, you may be in school and you may be learning, but you need to be doing. You need to be, be saying, God, here I am, use me. We, we, we sang a little song one time, says, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use a donkey, God, you can use me. If you can use a staff, you can use me. God, I am willing and able to use, be used by you. And how can he use us if we are not empowered? How can he use us if we don't have the power? I mean, it's like, it's so wonderful to have the, the electrical appliances that we have in our home. It's so marvelous to have a, a microwave. My, aren't you thankful for the microwave? You know, I was thinking, I must be getting old. I begin to think of the inventions that have been invented in my lifetime. You know, the calculator, the computer, the cell phone, the microwave. Man, that, that, you know, I, I must be getting old. These things are useless without power. I mean, you, you, let, you, let the, you let the electricity in your house go off. Look how stumped you are then. Man, there, there was a, last week, a few days, our, our water heater was out. I ain't never been so refreshed of a morning in all of my life. Come in and out water. And well water must be the coldest water on the face of the earth. Because I can remember taking showers without electricity and wasn't too awful bad in the city. But you get to, in the country and you get that well water pumping up. Out. Man, it'll light you up. How wonderful it was to get that electricity flowing back through that water and getting it warm by now. But you know what I learned? It takes you longer to take a cold shower than it does a warm shower. That's just food for thought. But without the power, none of these things... God sent his only begotten son, Jesus Jesus told the disciples, it is expedient or it is urgent or it is necessary for you that I go away. Right. For if I go not away, the comforter or the anointing of the Holy Ghost will not come. You see, Jesus came to earth, lived as man, lived as God. But the man part of Jesus couldn't allow him to be every place all the time. So it was expedient for him to, to sacrifice, to give up his life, to fulfill the, the, the atoning grace and power of God so that you and I might be able to come boldly before the throne and say, Father, forgive me and our sins not be just covered up, not just be pushed to the side, but to be washed away just like we had never sinned before in our life. I don't know about you, but that makes me excited. That makes me happy. That gives me cause for joy because all the junk in my life that, that the people remembers, God says, I don't know what you crazy folks are talking about. That's my beloved son. I don't see any sin in his life because he's had the blood applied. Jesus came for that reason. When he went to the Father, the Holy Ghost came so that you and I might have, have power, that we might have anointing, and that he could be everywhere at all times. How's that possible, preacher? Take that up with God. There's some things I don't know. I've been told, well, you think you're a know-it-all. Well, I'll confess before you and anybody else, I don't know it all. I guess I know less than I know all. But Jesus said, but you shall receive Power. The, the Greek word, and I don't know if y'all probably like, like some folks, you get tired of saying, well, I don't care about no Greek stuff. I want to know what the English says. Well, the Greek word for that is dunamis, which we get the same word as dynamite. I know that's old news to you, but, but let's, let's, let's bring it up. Let's remember it. Dynamite is something powerful. Dynamite will change the, the structure of what you put it in and explode it with. 
When the Holy Ghost comes into us, that same kind of power will change us and transform us from what we was into what we are going to be through Christ. You see, Christ said, I don't want you like you was. I want you how I want to form you. You see, he loved us like we was. He loved us even though we were a sinful, pitiful mess. He loved us even though we were liars, cheaters, and whoremongers. He loved us even though we were all that. But he says, I am going to change you into what you can be through me. He says, I will give you power, but the Holy Ghost will come in and give you power. We know that in just a few days later, that Pentecost takes place or the Holy Ghost falls in the upper room. I tell you what, I've, I've, I've been in, in the upper room and where, where they say that it was, uh, was the upper room and, and I tell you, you, you just walk in and it's just like a, I don't know how to explain it. It's just awesome. It's just powerful. And, and one, 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 one of the evangelists that, that was with us, we walked in there, and he says, oh, my brother Jimmy, he says, this is just like walking into your church. And I thought, well, good. Because, you see, we always need to have him here. Yes. We always need to have him. We don't ever need to say, well, let's invite him in. Let's, let's make sure we bring him in. And let's make sure that, that we welcome him in so that the people on the pew beside us who may not know him can get to know him. Jesus said, you shall receive power. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, chapter 2 verse 1 says, they were all with one accord in one place. Now right there rules out 99% of your churches. That, that's, that's just the way it is. I, I don't understand it. You know, uh, I, I told my church one time, I said, you know, if you Sunday morning folk and Sunday night folk would all come at one time, I believe y'all would like one another. I believe you'd get along. I believe we could really have church. But you know, you got, you got some, well, they just don't sing the songs that I like. Well, I just, ever since they put them chairs in there instead of them pews, it just ain't right. Oh, if I had old sister up there on that choir, if she'd just not sing so loud. You know, somebody's going to find something wrong somewhere. But if we could ever get everybody in the building to say, all right, God, I push my thoughts and my desires and my wants and my needs aside, and God, what would you have me to do today? God, what would you have me to do so that I can get in one mind and in one accord? God, what can I do so that you might fall in this place and somebody be saved? You see, we got to remember there's somebody sitting on the pew somewhere who is lost and on their way to hell. And if we're going to be the obstacle, we need to say, God, change me. God, transform me because I don't want to be the obstacle to keep somebody from going to heaven. I want to see them going to heaven. I don't want to see anybody going into hell. You see, that's just, that's just not a place you want to go. The power of the Holy Ghost fell. The people that was there began to speak with other tongues, cloven tongues like as of fire set upon each of them. And each people in the community was gathered around and they heard different ones speaking in their language and knew that they didn't speak that language. I tell you the other day, I forget what day it was. I thought it was so, so awesome. Pastor Christian was praying or something and all of a sudden he began to speak in tongues. I thought, huh, Spanish tongues sounds exactly like English tongues. <laughs> No, God's tongue sounds the same no matter what nationality you are. You see, it's an unknown language. What excites me is the devil don't even know. It tears him up when you pray in tongues. It tears him up. He don't know what to come in and battle you with because he don't know what you're praying about. Sometimes you don't even know what you're praying about. But the Holy Ghost, is the Holy Ghost for today? Absolutely. I believe it's more necessary today than it was when I was 10 years old. Why? Because the devil is more rampant. The scripture tells us that in the last days he's going to be even more violent. 
He's going to be even more cunning. Scripture says that Jesus is going to come lest the very elect, the very elect be deceived. I don't know about you, but I believe we are in those days and those times. We need the power of the Holy Ghost flowing in our life every day of our life. You mean to tell me I need to be doing a turkey jerk every day? I don't know. Whatever you do, you need to be knowing that you're full of the Holy Ghost and fire. You may need to do like me sometimes get down on your face and say, God, forgive me for not reading your word like I should. God, forgive me for not praying like I should. God, you see, sometimes, yes, repentance begins at the house of the Lord. I read that somewhere. Yes. I also read, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, get down off of our high horses, thinking we're all of that, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Hold on, God. I thought you was talking about your people. You mean your people's got wicked ways? You've been to church lately? And turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. Then will I heal their land? You see, the church has got to realize we haven't got it all. We got to have him every day of our life. Sure, we can be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost and fire, but we better be walking the walk if we're going to talk the talk. They heard them speaking in their tongue and Peter said, wait a minute, these aren't drunk, as you suppose. I mean, they were staggering, falling down. They look like some of y'all sometimes. Speaking in tongues, and jibber-jabber, what's going on? They, they've had too much of the wine. No, these are not drunk, as you suppose. But this is that which was spoken and prophesied by the prophet Joel. Well, what did Joel say? I'm glad you asked. Over in Joel chapter 2. Verse 28, he said, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit upon the church of God denomination. No, he said, Upon all flesh. Upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. Fire, blood, and fire, and pillars of smoke. And the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass. This is exciting that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. It don't matter. Don't let anybody, don't let the devil tell you that you've done too much wrong. Don't let the devil tell you your children have gone too far. Don't let the devil tell you your spouse is never going to make it. You remember the word of Almighty God coming through the prophet Joel and many other prophets. Whosoever God himself through John. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Joel prophesied it a couple thousand years before or a little time before and then Jesus come and said you shall be received power and then Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost and said these aren't drunk but this is that this is the fulfillment of what Joel said would come can I tell you when you read in scripture that it says this is going to happen it hadn't happened yet it's going to God tells you something's going to take place in your life it hasn't happened yet. It will. God has given me things and I've seen so much take place. There's things yet to take place. At times, we get weary in well-doing. But the scripture says, be not weary in well-doing. 
For when we are faithful to him, he is faithful to us. Is the Holy Ghost for today? Absolutely. Is the Holy Ghost for tomorrow? You better believe it. The Holy Ghost will never go out of style. Churches may forsake him. Churches may want to, you know, I just cannot understand a church that would say, well, let's just take the songs about the blood out because it offends somebody. If it offends them, maybe they need to take a bath in it. If it, if it offends them, maybe they need to get down and wallow in it. Maybe they need to say, Lord, just pour it out on me. I remember my first church, we was having an anointing service. I told everybody, I said, come tonight. We're going to have an old-fashioned anointing service. I said, you, you bring your oil. And, you know, you know when, when uh, Samuel anointed David, he didn't just, you know, get a little dab and... Bless you in the name of Jesus, and you're going to be king, you're going to be prophet, you're going to do this, and you're going to do that. Now, he took the horn of oil, and he poured it. Scripture says that it ran down his beard to his feet. It says, from that day, the Holy Spirit was upon him. I said, we're going to have an old-fashioned David anointing. I said, whatever oil you want, bring it, and I'll pour it on you. My mom called me, son, do you realize we got carpet, brand new carpet up here? Yes, ma'am. We, they all, folks out on the communion table, as people brought in their oil, set it up on there. You know, we had them all the way from the little bottles of olive oil like most churches have sitting on their communion table. We had them from that up to quartz. Well, there's this one little fella, he come up and he, 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 you know, I'd put people's names on their oil as they'd bring it up so I'd know whose oil to pour on who. And he brought his up there, and he, he set it down, and I thought, I thought, my goodness, he was one of the biggest ones. And uh, so he, he, you know, we're going down to the prayer line, and I come to him. He was, he was the last one. And uh, I just reached around, and I thought, man, all that, all this oil, I, I just reached around, I got the church's anointing oil. And it was, you know, about, oh, three-fourths empty. And I said, brother, do you want it? He says, I want it all. I want it all. Give it to me. Give me all. Give me all. I took the lid off of that anointing oil, and I started pouring. And I thought, well, surely it's out and empty. And I pulled it up, and they hadn't a drop left. So I poured some more. I thought, oh, surely by now it's all gone. I poured it up. Hadn't a drop moved. Folks, now I'm, I'm telling you the truth. Yeah, I've got many, many witnesses to back this up. About four or five times I did that, and finally I thought, well, I'm going to hold it until it quits. And I poured and I poured and I poured. And finally, no more oil was coming out, just the drips and the dribbles. And I turned it out and I put it and set it down, set it over. I, I have that bottle to this day. After service, I asked my mom, I said, did, did you see what? She said, yes, I seen what happened. She said, you want to know what really happened? I said, what? She said, you was going to rob that boy of his blessing. She said, he wanted it all. She said, he bought a big bottle. She said, you was just going to pour a little bottle. She said, God gave him what he wanted. Can I tell you folks, tonight God will give you what you want. If you're sincere, if you desire, if you hunger. The scripture says, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Is the Holy Ghost for today? Absolutely. You need it. Your children needs it. Your great, your grandchildren need it. Your great, great, on and on down the list. I am so thankful tonight. On both sides of my family, my mom's side, my dad's side goes back. I think, I, I think I'm fifth generation Pentecostal, actually Church of God, on both sides of the family. What's that mean? That means that on both sides of my family, they got loved ones and married people from Pentecostal persuasion. That's why it's so important we tell our children, you get you somebody who believes Oh, but I'll cause him to come to the knowledge of Jesus. You may do it, and I hope so.
But it's so much better if they already understand and know why you do the turkey jerk. They don't think you're crazy. We got to introduce him to this world. And how can we do it if we don't have him? How can we do it if we're ashamed of him? How can we do it if we're afraid of him? I'll never forget one day I was on my way to church. You know how the devil will get into you on the way to church. Sunday morning, you know, you start out, you know, fighting. You know, how it is, all the way to church. You get in church. Praise God, preacher, how are you today? Yeah, I know. My family's the only one like that. But on, on, on the way to church one night, my little Hannah would not sit in her car seat and buckle her seatbelt. I told her, oh, you will. I whooped over to the side of the road and I got out of that van and I went over and I opened that door. And when I opened that door, I saw fear on that little girl's face. I buckled her seat belt and I cried the rest of the way to church. I said, God, I don't want my little girl afraid of me. God don't want you afraid of him. He wants you to fear him, yes, but afraid. Don't ever be afraid of the Holy Spirit. He's a gentleman. I, I, I think a lot of times, and I know I'm rambling, I'm, I'm, but I'm trying to land and I ain't going to say in closing because you know that don't mean a thing. <laughs> Just like in conclusion and my last point, they all mean the same thing, nothing. <laughs> That's just the preacher in us. Now I don't even forget what I was going to say. It must not have been that important. <laughs> but when the power of the Holy Spirit is alive within our hearts, we know that we can go into the world. You can go into the workplace and proclaim the gospel. You can go into the school and proclaim the gospel. You can come into a church service and proclaim the gospel. It's not going to be every time what your preconceived ideas has it to be. Most folks think, well, I, if I could get the Holy Ghost like Sister Susie, okay. Or they think, oh, if the Holy Ghost comes on me like Sister Susie, I don't know that I'll... He's a gentleman. He comes upon each individual person in many different forms and fashions. I had one lady in my church years ago. She says, I, I want the Holy Ghost, but I don't want to jerk and I don't want to shout and I don't want to jerk, shake and she went through this list of everything she did not want to do I said you better let God hear you say that she says but I don't want the Holy Ghost and she would seek the Holy Ghost every time we'd have an altar call she'd come down and you know, says what you want I want the Holy Ghost and we'd pray for her and we'd pray for her. I don't know how many weeks and months that we prayed for her finally I come to her and I said sis I said what do you want? She says, I want the Holy Ghost. I said, do you want it however he wants to give it to you? She says, I'll take it however he wants to give it to me. We anointed her. Bam! Everything she said she did not want to do. In the next 30 minutes, that's all she done. I mean, she rolled in the floor. She jerked. She cried. She laughed. She screamed. I mean, everything she said out of her mouth, I do not want to do. After service, I said, God's going to send the humor, don't he? I said, are you glad you did what he wanted? Yes. Are you glad? You, yes. I'll, I'll never forget the day that my wife received the baptism. She'd been praying for, for months to receive the baptism. And on, well, it was one Sunday morning, nothing out of the ordinary. We'd had an awesome service. We was coming down the prayer line. She was on this end, and I was up here on another end, me and my associate pastor and my pastor of altar ministries. We was up here and we was praying for something. All of a sudden, I heard the loudest speaking in tongues I'd ever heard in my life. My associate pastor, he said, who's that? I grinned and I said, Tracy just got the Holy Ghost. And he about come unglued because he'd been praying with her for months. And by the time we got down there, you know, to, to pray with her, she, she had done, 
she had, I mean, she had, and she was down in the floor. She was just laying there laughing. And she said, finally, finally. I said, well, what made the difference? She says, I don't know. I just finally said, God, here I am. You see, we Pentecostals sometimes try too hard when it's just simply come. Faith, believing, ask. Uh, and I mean this in closing. <laughs> I preached a message to the young people one time. He's as easy as the ABCs. Ask, believe, and confess. That's all it is. That's all it is. And tonight as we are in this service, there's not a huge crowd. There was 120 in the upper room. 120 wasn't the factor. The factor was they tarried. Jesus said, tarry until you be endued with power from on high. I believe, what was it, Pastor? They said about 500 started out in the upper room. And as the days wore on, well, I, I got to go to work. I got a wife. I got to, got to tend the field. I got to do this. I, I got to do this. I got to do that. Something pulled them out. 120 tarried. 120 waited. 120 were filled with the anointing. Now, had, had 300 stayed and tarried, the scripture would read, and on the day of Pentecost, 300 was in the upper room. Don't get your mind on, well, 120 is a mystical, magical. No, 120 ain't got nothing to do with it. What it has to do with it is, and when the day of Pentecost had fully come, or in other words, they waited on God's time. God saw their patience. God saw their desire. God saw their hearts. He saw their sincerity, and he said, okay, it's time. And he poured out his spirit. Tonight I want us to come and I want us to gather in this altar and I want us to pray and I want us to ask God to let the Holy Ghost come into us. To let the Holy Ghost move in upon us. We used to sing that little song that let the Holy Ghost from heaven fall on me. Let the Holy Ghost from heaven fall on me. I'll sing about him, shout about him, talk about him to everyone I meet. So let the Holy Ghost from heaven fall on me. We need to say, God, fall on me. I won't be afraid. I won't be ashamed. I won't be embarrassed. Lord, use me. God, if nobody else wants you, then that gives a whole lot more for me. But I kind of believe there's some folks around you that want him. I believe there's some folks that's around you that says, I want more of him. I, I know I've, I've, I've been in ministry over half my life. And I want more of him every day of my life. I got to have him more and more every day. You know, I used to think back a long, 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 long time ago, I used to think when I reached 25, I'd be an adult. I'd be grown up. I'd be a man. I wouldn't have to worry about this. I wouldn't have to worry about that. Here I am, 56 years old, and still waiting to grow up. Still waiting to be a man. Still waiting for the devil to leave me alone. But you know what? He ain't going to. Why? Because I'm a threat. Why does he bother you? Because you're a threat. Hey, if the devil ain't bothering you, don't sit back and say, hmm, he don't bother me. You need to be scared out of your boots because he's got you right where he wants. You're on your way to hell. If the devil ain't bothering you, if he ain't after you, that's just because he's got you. That's just, that's, that's, had this little girl, I, I know I told you I was closing, but I am. This little girl in my church one time, she goes, hey, preacher, I, just, just, Billy just ain't paying no more attention to me like he used to. And I said, well, did you go out with him? Well, yeah, I went out with him. I said, well, did you kiss him? Yeah, I kissed him. I said, well, you're no longer a challenge. He's done God what he was after. Is he still your boyfriend? Well, he calls me every once in a while. 
I said, well, don't, don't sweat it. Get you another boy. Get, get Andy. I said, that'll make Billy come around. When the devil's got you, he ain't going to worry with you. But when he sees you flirting with Jesus, look out. He's going to attack you. But man, I don't want to be attacked. But you shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come, you can look at the devil and say, shut your face, get out of mine, get behind me, and leave me alone.